Look what I got this week. Hey y'all, my name is Mitch. I used to make printing videos, now I make cycling videos. I know, it's a weird pivot. As part of that, I picked this little guy up, the Insta361X2. I took it on a ride on Saturday, so I'm gonna show you that footage and all the different camera angles that I tried. I'll also talk about how it works, things I liked, things I didn't like, some tips and tricks that I've learned to get the best footage possible. I should warn you though, I'll probably be a little biased because when this was on my bike the other day, I got my very first KOM ever on Strava. So I guess that answers the age-old cycling question, is it Arrow? This is the Insta360 1X2. It's the second generation of their first non-modular 360 camera. That's a mouthful. Uh, so I'm just gonna talk basics of how it works. Unlike, say, a GoPro that has one sensor, one camera, this thing has two lenses, two sensors, two cameras. The lens on this side takes a picture of everything over here, and the lens on this side takes a picture of everything over here. It stitches those two pictures together, projects that onto a globe, and then you can look all over the globe and pick the part of the picture that you want to use. As cool as that is, you may be wondering, why did I get this camera for cycling, especially if I already have a GoPro? It turns out, if you take this camera and a selfie stick, and you put the camera on the selfie stick, as you do, and extend that selfie stick, because this lens overlaps a little bit with this lens, the space between the two disappears. That means you can get shots like this without needing a friend to hold the camera. For my very simple test, I tried six different angles. One behind the bike, one behind the bike but down by the wheel, one behind the bike and off to the left, one in front of the bike. This is really weird, like blessing the camera with all these hand movements. Uh, one in front of the bike, one in the front down by the wheel, and then one in front off to the left. This will all make a lot more sense when you see the angles, so let's see the angles. First up, behind the bike. This one was probably the most obvious to me. It made a lot of sense. Like, why don't you just put it behind the bike? It's like somebody's following you. In theory, it makes a lot of sense. In practice, don't love this angle so much. Uh, it's a little jumpy and basically just like my butt is in the center of the frame, right in the middle. So, not ideal. The good thing about this angle though is I did get the KOM. It was completely an accident, not because I'm the kind of person that gets KOMs by accident. This was my very first one and I'm very, very excited about it. That's why I'm bringing it up a second time in this video. What happened was I knew the camera was on there and so I was riding as fast as I could. I wanted to make y'all think I'm stronger than I am. And the result was I rode up that hill faster than anybody else had and I got a KOM. I'm gonna take that win. So the next angle, I took the selfie stick and kind of twisted it off to the right and put it down so it's over by the rear derailleur and could set. As you can see, the wheel is kind of messed up. It looks almost like somebody cut the wheel in half and then stitched it together. I guess that is exactly what happened. That doesn't happen every time. You kind of have to like mess with angles and learn, you know, which angle, where do you have to angle the camera to minimize those kinds of stitching errors. But the shot looks really cool. It's low to the ground, makes it feel really fast. I guess it's a good shot if you want like get new wheels or something and you want to show them off. I like this angle. For the next angle, I sent the selfie stick off to the left, so it's still attached to the seat post. It's about the same height as the top tube on the bike, but it's basically just sticking like almost straight out to the left. This shot looks really cool, but it tends to be super wobbly, I've found. And it makes sense, I mean, you're basically taking a selfie stick and then you're riding on bumpy LA tarmac. You know, of, of course it's gonna look wobbly. So if you're on really smooth tarmac, if you have a super smooth pedal stroke, I imagine you want to be as wobbly as this, but that is something to look out for. Out front, it was the one I was the most excited about. I thought this would be great. Like if I could just put like a selfie stick on my bike here and turn it into a unicorn, if I just put the selfie stick here and the camera here, then I can ride, you know, both hands on the wheel. I don't have to hold the GoPro out like while I'm riding. In reality, it just didn't look the way that 
I wanted it to look. I tried a couple different angles, like I moved the selfie stick up and down. Again, it, it looks cool. I don't know if it's good for a segment like this where I'm talking to you. I think it'll be better for action shots, but I'm gonna try again. Like if I can get that angle to work, like, oof, I will use it every single video. The penultimate angle that I used was uh, front of the wheel and then down a bit. I like this angle. It's low to the ground, it feels really fast. Again, it's a great way to show off your tires. It just feels kind of unique. As cool as it is though, it's not as cool as the next one, the last one, which was my favorite. I took the selfie stick, I attached it to my drop bars and I sent it like way out to the left. And the cool thing about this is you can get the full bike and rider, I guess, without a lot of distortion. And it looks really cool on turns. Let me show you this. So here's a map. I'm going through like this little set of turns and here's what it looks like on camera. That was my favorite angle and I thought it looked pretty cool. But really what makes these all look cool is when you put them all together in a sequence. But before I show you the sequence, do me a solid hit the like button. And as a thank you, here's a picture of my adorable dog. So, now that I've had it for one full week, what do I think of the Insta360 One X2? Let's start with the bad, because it's not all good. There are some things that I don't love about it. Image quality, it's not great. And I'm not just talking about resolution, we'll talk about that in a second, but the color science, like GoPro's color science is way better than Insta360's color science. The colors I can get out of here are like amazing. The colors I get out of here are like, you know, they're good. Disclaimer on that, I'm a designer, I've worked as a printer, as a retoucher, like colors are super important to me. I may just be nitpicking here. The second thing I don't love about it is not unique to the Insta360 camera, it happens to all 360 cameras, and that's stitching errors. It is annoying to have a shot set up, and then when you look at it later, you realize there's a stitching error that cuts your wheel <laughs> right in half. I imagine I'll get better at making sure to avoid those situations, and one day the technology will get better where you don't even have to worry about that. The third thing that I'll complain a little bit about, it is super bumpy on a bike. Now, granted, a lot of that may be the fact that LA roads, especially in my neighborhood, are terrible. <laughs> I mean, you saw the footage. I guess I was just hoping that it was magically perfect and looked like it was another person filming. It's again, like it's a selfie stick and it's going like this on the road, it's gonna be bumpy. It's amazing it looks as smooth as it does. So those are, those are kind of my complaints about it. But there are a lot of things that I do really love about this. For example, you can get really fun camera angles. Related to that is my next point, which is you can kind of like fix it in post with this camera, which is crazy. Because it takes the images and projects them on a sphere, you can reframe things and move the camera around and, and do literal camera movements after the fact. When I'm writing with the GoPro or like the mirrorless camera. Part of my mind is always thinking about framing. Probably isn't the safest thing to be doing while you're riding a bike, right? Like I'm holding the camera, I'm riding the bike, but part of my brain is thinking like, oh, is this like level? Is it lined up? And GoPro has a lot of cool things like auto leveling, it makes it a little easier, but I can just kind of stick this anywhere I want. In the back of my head, at least there's this like relief that I can probably still get like a good shot in there, even if it isn't the shot that I expected. And that's nice not only for knowing that I'll get the shot, but then it turns a bike ride that's a shoot back into more of a bike ride. There, There is a difference. Like I still have to go on rides where I'm not shooting just so I can like enjoy the ride. Shooting a bike ride is work. This makes it a little less work. Oh, and I almost forgot the battery life on this. Insane. I rode around for like an hour and a half, recorded pretty much the entire time, and the battery still had plenty of charge left. The GoPro's batteries I thought were like awesome. Somehow this is even more awesome. It does have quite a few little like quirks. You really have to work. So I thought I'd share a couple tips that I've learned to get the best possible footage out of this thing. Disclaimer, I've only had it for a week. Very early learnings. First tip, stay wide. This camera does have a 5.7K resolution, but it comes with a pretty big butt. That resolution is achieved by stitching those two cameras together, projected on a globe, right? So what happens in post is you pick 
which area of the globe you're gonna look at. So the globe has a resolution of 5.7K, but the little like postage stamp area that you're looking at doesn't. And if you make that area really small, you're not even getting HD. You're not even getting 720p. Like you're going back in SD land. So what you wanna do is pick an area in the globe that's as wide as possible because then you're gonna get more resolution. I was hoping that I'd be able to like zoom in on, on little portions. The footage just kind of falls apart. I hope it's a lot better in future models. I assume it will be. Just the fact that you can move around is really cool. But for now, I definitely recommend like stay wide with your shots. Second tip that I've learned this week is do not drop the exposure compensation. When I'm shooting with the GoPro, I drop the footage by a full stop. So for you non-camera nerds out there, you make the whole image darker. And the reason why you do that, the sky, especially when you're riding in the middle of the day, super bright, and the rest of your image could be dark. That's why sometimes you'll get pictures where like the sky is blown out to white. So by dropping it by a full stop, you usually save the blue in the sky at least with the GoPro. And the GoPro does an awesome job of doing that. Since this is also an action camera, I thought, okay, I'll do that. It doesn't hold up. This camera does not do well in low light. In the shadows, it struggles. And then if you drop it down by a stop, it struggles even more. For now, I'm gonna keep the exposure compensation just level at zero, and it pains my heart, but I'm gonna let the sky blow out. I come from a background of image manipulation and optimization, and so I may just be nitpicking here, uh, but yeah, don't drop the exposure compensation. Tip three, maybe controversial. I'm going against the big reason why a lot of people like this camera. Do not use the mobile app. Use the desktop app. With the caveat, only do this if you care about image quality. The app itself, really intuitive, you can do some really cool things. The desktop app, and I say this as a product designer, the desktop app is horrendous, but you can get much better footage quality out of the desktop app. Again, we're going into video nerd land here, but on the phone, you can only export a compressed H.264 file. On the desktop app, you can export ProRes 422. Let me explain what that means to those of you who are not super nerds like me. This camera produces a video, but that video is compressed to save file size. That compressed video, if you edit it on the phone, is compressed again. And the compression both times is pretty substantial. On the desktop app, the video you get out of the camera is still compressed, you can't change that, but the compression out of the app on the desktop is slightly less. It's not quite lossless, but it's ProRes 422. If you know about video codecs, it's really pretty, you know, let me just show you the footage and then you'll see what I mean. So that's tip three. If you're a nerd like me, you're gonna wanna use the desktop app. You know, I was really hoping that this could be my one camera on the ride, but the image quality just isn't there yet. I am hopeful for the future, but for now, I'm gonna have to bring both cameras. They both have a place in my toolbox, but my toolbox right now is my Jersey Pockets, and they're about to explode. I guess that means I'm gonna have to get a bar bag. What do you all use for storage on your rides, especially on your long rides? Let me know in the comments, and let me know what you thought of the Insta360 ONE X2. While you're there, if you haven't already, give this video a like. Thanks so much. See you soon.